Hey, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours. This is your Monday Minutes, and I'm going to keep going here with these EMS Quick Study Tips. Um, and we're still in the poisoning and overdose section here. This is part six of this uh, session. We're kind of winding down and going to be getting into some other things shortly uh, with these Quick Study Tips, okay? Um, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, tricyclic antidepressants. But before we do that, um, I want to just kind of, you know, kind of go over why I think this stuff is important. I know I've said this pretty much in every episode that this is important, guys, because it's not just for exam prep. And I have exam preparation here as one of the key things why this stuff is important because the things that I'm giving you in these study tips are sort of the key elements that you will see on a lot of EMS exams throughout your EMS career, okay? But at the same time, it's important because it helps you with your patient care, it helps you identify things, and with your clinical impression of a patient, it helps you with your documentation, your interaction with other EMS professionals, including doctors and nurses. So it all ties in together. And my, of course, stress to you is that as we go on in the year, and you see what I'm talking about, and getting these key points, if you don't understand something, if something isn't clicking with you, if somehow something I'm showing you is maybe confusing or you don't recall it, right, go ahead and open that textbook, use some sort of an online resource, maybe you're a member at turbomedic.com of mine, you can go there and research it and really master the content, guys, so that when you review this stuff later on, that's what it is. It's a review. You don't have to sort of try to memorize this stuff and remember this from scratch as if you're a brand new student. All right. So, all right. So let's get into this this week's ep- uh, episode here. And again, we're talking about the types of poisonings and overdoses and toxicology type stuff. And we're talking about tricyclic antidepressants. Now, you know, this here is something to tell you. For years, when I was a young EMT, and I would hear medics talk about, oh, maybe it's a tricyclic antidepressant overdose, and I had no clue what they were talking about. I didn't care, right? The patient was in arrest, so the patient was overdosed, and it was managing the airway. It was doing CPR. It was all that type of stuff, right? H's and T's and things like that, right? But it's important to understand this stuff because if you have a patient that, that might have intentionally or accidentally overdosed on this, it can lead you down a path on better patient care and what you can do to treat this patient and you know facilitate your transport to an appropriate facility. So some of the common medications that we see, most of the time it's amitriptyline, uh, you might see it as Elovil, that's one of the more uh, important ones, and nortriptyline, okay? These are sort of the two really common ones that we see a lot in the field. I have two others here that I listed to, um, amoxapine and um, doxapine, okay, or doxapine. I'm not sure exactly how that would be uh, pronounced, but those are other ones that you might see. There are a few others that are out there, um, but amitriptyline, I think, is the most common one you will see, or again, it's Elevil. Uh, you, you might see that as one of the most common ones you're going to see out there in the field, okay? Now, who cares about it? What is it doing? How is it doing? Well, these drugs, they block that reuptake of norepinephrine and serotonin in your brain, okay? Some of them actually have an anticholinergic effect or they have a, uh, uh, they can affect the cardiac membrane actions. And this is when you start seeing patients that are in VTAC, okay? You might get patients that, present with heat exhaustion or heat stroke, okay? This stuff, guys, very dangerous stuff. Even low doses, even if the patient only takes a few extra pills, okay, um, it can be very dangerous. And, you know, someone's typical uh, one-month prescription bottle, if they took that whole bottle, let's say someone's trying to commit suicide, they take that whole bottle, that can be fatal. It's enough to be fatal, all right. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the signs and symptoms. Very common with a lot of these drugs to kind of repeat themselves. If you look at some of the other um, poisoning and overdose signs and symptoms, right? A lot of these are pretty 
pretty similar. The confusion, the hallucinations, right? Very similar. Um, dry mouth is one for this. Respiratory depression is a big one, okay? Again, delirium, confusion, hallucinations, right? Um, hypotension, hyperthermia. I just mentioned about how the patients can present sort of with that heat stroke, heat exhaustion, uh, seizures as well, and coma, okay? And of course, death, if it's left untreated, especially when you talk about things like where it's affecting cardiac uh, 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 membrane actions and things like VTAC, okay? Um, so keep in mind, though, that the signs and symptoms that we're, I'm talking about can vary by the dose, it can vary by the drug, and the time of the ingestion, or how long ago they, they took the drug. Keep all this in mind when you're assessing your patient, and think about this when you're presented with scenarios when you're taking exams, okay? Someone who's presenting with hypothermia, maybe they weren't outside all day, try to, th okay, maybe they're on a, a, a tricyclic antidepressant, okay? Kind of think about that when you're taking exams and looking at scenarios and scenes and things like that, okay? Now, <clears throat> talking about management for this type of patient, um, kind of straightforward here, guys, right? Because, of course, our safety is always paramount. You're going to, of course, do your ABCs or your CBAs, right? And you're going to treat the symptoms. If they're in cardiac arrest, you're going to do CPR. If they're um, respiratory uh, depressed, you're going to give them oxygen. Maybe you're going to intubate them or ventilate them, okay? Um, starting an IV, you want to start trying to transport these patients, especially if they're respiratory depressed or, or in a coma, things like that start transporting them, get them to the hospital for more definitive care. Now, as paramedics, there are some drugs that might be available to you as a paramedic. Of course, you want to follow your guidelines, okay, and, and or maybe even bounce this stuff off a medical control uh, doc if you have this available to you, right? Bicarb is a drug we can use. Um, activated charcoal, if, if you carry that on your ambulance, you, you can use. And then things like diazepam when it comes to things like treating seizures that we had talked about as one of the signs and symptoms, right? So that's an option or other other drugs that you might use for uh, seizure activities, okay? So a lot of these, I know if you might have noticed, most of them fall, as far as it comes to management, fall under the same thing, right? ABCs, your safety, treating the symptoms, oxygenating them, ventilating them, right? Not so much a lot with drugs, not so much, um, you know, with with real advanced, advanced sort of uh, techniques. A lot of it is your basic uh, paramedic skills that are going to be helping these patients, okay? So just keep that in mind. You know, treat the symptoms. There's no definitive uh, things for a lot of these drugs, no reversible, except for things like the opiates that we had talked about before and in previous episodes. Um, so, you know, you want to make sure you're safe, do the ABCs, and treat the symptoms that are going on with your patient, okay, when it comes to treatment. Now, that's pretty much it for this uh, uh, episode, guys. Not a long episode, right? Pretty basic stuff. Um, be familiar with some of those, those these drugs, that your patient might be on. Like I mentioned before, the amitriptyline is one of the most popular, but there are others out there. Um, you know, if you get a patient, you're not quite sure that you think they might have overdosed on something and they have the prescription bottle there, look it up, right? Look it up online, get your, your smartphone out, type in that drug and see if it is a tricyclic antidepressant. All right, it might lead you down the path of how to better manage that patient and what you want to go ahead and present when you get to the emergency room and for your documentation. All right, guys, that's it. Next time, we're going to wrap up this whole poisoning and overdose stuff. I'm going to talk about bites and stings. going to kind of be a short episode, but we're going to kind of bring that home so we can move on to other stuff. I'm going to get into neurological emergencies uh, after we're done with this. Okay, so next week, we're going to bang out bites and stings and get into neurological emergencies. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy this these Monday Minutes. Um, if you have some of your own, be sure to send them over to me. Um, i love to go ahead and do an episode that you guys would like to hear about uh, here on the Monday Minutes and EMS Office Hours. They don't necessarily have to be uh, study tips. They can be other topics as well, okay? Uh, so send that over to me. My email uh, is contact at emsofficehours.com. Um, guys, also, I have all my social media um, venues here. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and I'm on Snapchat at EMS Safe. 
Um, so any of these uh, URLs here that you see, any of these links that you see here, you can type this into your browser. It will bring you to those pages where you can go ahead and follow me on these social media outlets. I do a little something different on each one of these. So it's not the same content on each one. Something's a little bit different on each one. Some of it's more personal. Some of it's more educational. Okay. Some of it more engaging than others. Okay. So um, go ahead and follow me. I'd love to see you uh, as one of my social media tribe, as they say. Okay. All right, guys, that's it for me. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, if you have any, uh, any comments, questions, concerns, uh, suggestions, whatever you have, send them over to me, guys. I'd love to hear them. All right. All right. That's it, guys. Uh, until next time, I am Jim Hoffman, and this is your Monday Minutes and EMS Office Hours. Stay safe.